Hi, Midge Johnson from Midge Johnson Fine Art here, making my very first YouTube video. I'm going to start a YouTube channel and share my process. So today I'm working on um, a grid for uh, six by six paintings so that I can have some small works in my gallery. And I've done about nine of them and I'm using a limited color palette. But on the four in front of me, I'm feeling like they need to start bringing in more variety of color. They're getting very purpley looking and the whole grid is leaning purple because of these pieces. So while I love certain attributes of them, I feel like I have to go in and make a change. And I'm a very intuitive painter, so I have no idea what, I'm, what I will be changing. But I thought you could just um, come along with me and I'll tell you why I'm trying what I'm trying and please excuse the uh, camera setup. It's my first time and I'm not really sure how to zoom, but I'm sure I'll learn all of those things in due time. Thank you to my husband for setting this up. So on my palette, I have white, Hansa yellow light, black and green. It's a emerald green from Jerry's. Um, the others are golden products. I generally use golden products. Now and then I buy some from Jerry's. I also have some ink over here. I love using ink. I've got a Liquitex Quinacritone Magenta and um, I can't even pronounce the blue. That, uh, well, it's a, green, it's a green shade of cayenne blue, something like that. So the first thing I'm going to do is try to get some yellow in here. And I, it's going to be shocking at first because this is such a limited palette. So I do understand that once I apply yellow, it's going to look out of place and um, gonna, I'm going to work with that and I'm going to see if I can incorporate it in a tasteful way. So I've got some yellow mixed in with white at the moment. It's very highly saturated. That means it hasn't been dulled down at all. And I think I will dull it down with just the tiniest piece, a little bit of black. And now we've got like a yellowy gray, almost like a greeny gray, which is fine for what I want to do right now. So yellow and purple are complementary colors. So I'm going to just go dab this wherever I see an opportunity uh, up against purple. So one place would be right here. Um, I'm seeing it's very green right now, maybe not quite um, a color to my liking but I can always glaze it, I can always cover it. So right now I'm just trying to find the places where I can begin to introduce different colors. I've got a lot of depth in here, so I don't want to lose my depth either, and hopefully I won't. Okay, so now I like to lighten my color or change my colors as I go. I don't want to use too much of the same, but I've just added a little more white and that will brighten this up. You see it next to there. It's a very subtle difference. So I think I will um, make a fairly large area here with the new color. And at some point, I'm going to want to blend this into the colors around it. And I'll show you how we do that. But that will come a little bit later. First, we have to try to get effects. Um, I'm going to take this all the way out to the edge because I feel like that is a better um, use of this color color in the composition at hand. And I'm going to try to work on uh, several of them at the same time. I'm going again to lighten my color. Again, I'm going to actually put some of the lighter one right in there and not enough light. So I'm going to even throw some white in there and try to vary the color within the color field. I actually like that. I think it's actually given more um, of a depth to the areas around it. And I always like to have at least three places, if not more, of the color in my composition. So in order to balance things out, I'm going to come over here and make this, I'm going to cover this uh, little loopy thing. I'm not sure I liked it there, and I don't think I need it there because it's kind of pulling the eye away from the composition. So covering that with yellow, and it's actually not really yellow, it's more of a green. <laughs> That's okay. Blue and green are contiguous colors. Yellow and purple are complementary. So I think I'm good all around. I think this color does blend well. It's just a question of aesthetics at this point. Do I like it or don't I like it? 
I'm beginning to like it a bit more. I'm going to throw a little more yellow over here, the lighter tone of it. And um, so that we have variation within the color field. That's important, variety. They say variety is the spice of life. I like it. Now I have to start incorporating other things. I'm going to use some magenta ink and see what happens when I um, try to brighten this area in here. Uh, or I really want to um, incorporate that yellow green tone. Now, ordinarily, I would never go with a magenta color because it, it leans to purple. And when you put two complementary colors together, they look beautiful, but when they merge, they make a neutral. Sometimes that neutral is beautiful, sometimes not. But we're going to see if we can just um, change the tone of this purpley color here by adding the magenta ink. And I'm just getting up there and tapping into that yellow. And I kind of like that. I think it's brightened up uh, the composition. And it's also allowed me to change the color field just a bit in the center. I'm going to cover up this more because it's right in the center and I find it distracting. So I do like what's happening there. And I think I'm going to carry it right down over this loop into here and um, across and maybe to the area of yellow here. So now I've kind of made a connection and I feel already that that yellow is a little more incorporated. Not liking this washed out light uh, purple area here. So I'm going to glaze that. Glazing just means putting a transparent um, coat over something and you can do it with ink or you can do it with um, mixed down acrylic paint. Um, okay, very bright for right now, but we can, we can always go back and dull it a bit. I'm going to take this right around the yellow. And my purpose in doing this is not just to add new color, but it's to make the yellow be incorporated into the composition. Very important that um, it relates to other things around it. I like where it's going so far, but it's looking quite busy to me. Um, my favorite area of the theme is here. This is very subtle, but I love those marks in there. And I like the loopiness, but I'm tending now to think that they're a little too busy. So now I'm going to put some green in there and uh, mix it in with my yellow. This is the emerald green. I'm going to mix it with some yellow, another yellowy green. Um, wow, that is a loud saturated color. I tend not to uh, want to use saturated color. I try to force myself to do it sometimes, but I'm going to put just a speck of black again, just to tone it down a bit. Oh yeah, I like that very much. Okay, again, it's a strong color, but I'm just going to go in and, and put it in strategic places. I hope that you can hear me, that my beautiful sound system my husband made me is uh, working out and that you can hear me well, and I'll find out when I play the video back. So I'm gonna come in here and take away some of this busyness. How do I do that? I just do it by covering. Just cover up some of what's there. Go slowly when you do this on your own because you don't wanna cover something that you really want. Um, so you can get it back sometimes by quickly wiping the paint off. But I'm already liking the variety of color in here taking this straight across now to merge with these other yellows that are here. Now I feel that most of the mixing of the colors is at the lower half of the painting, so I'm going to go into the upper half to make sure that we have some continuity of color there. And I think the best place for me to do that would be right here. It sort of will continue this green, come over here. Um, I can even come make a shape that sort of, I, may, I like the little hole in the middle there. I think I'll leave that. And let's make a shape that will come into this magenta. Maybe even connect with the yellow down here. Now you can see we're getting a little, some people would say muddy. Um, I would call that neutral. And there's nothing wrong with neutral. In fact, you should have neutrals in your paintings to give the eye a resting place. So I, I'm really liking what's going on here. We're getting blurred edges, and um, I think it's making it an easier painting to look at um, for a while <laughs> when you have your neutral in there. 
and I often will scrape into my neutrals or scrape into any paint. I'm just doing this with the back of the brush just to lend a little interest to that area. Now, I do feel like the painting is still choppy, so now I've decided to make this area larger and I'm gonna devote that area to green. I'm adding more green to the paint I already mixed. I'm adding more black and I will probably add well, I'm not going to add more white just yet, so I'm going to come in here now and cover that. Not liking it so much. And this is how I paint. I put something on. Do I like it? Don't I like it? Sometimes I like to try to figure out why I don't like it, and I, I will try to explain that as I go, because that's really where I learn. I need to learn my taste for my personal voice. When I put something down, if I like it, why do I like it? And if I don't like it, why don't I like it? But the great thing is we can always change. Yeah, I'm really liking more color going into this and I definitely see how it needed simplification. I'm already gonna come and expand the green area out. So I think I'll turn the camera off now um, and I'll continue it a little bit and come back to it and, and I'll catch you up on what I did. Thank you for your patience and I will see you in the next video.